Rob Dolcher here. I got Jeff Goodman with me. Hell no. John Fink. Are we still live? Kill the 68 till I die. Oh. I'm sorry, man. I'm blacked out. Randolph children. DJ Khaled, you know the big DJ Khaled guy? Hands grow up and in. Goodman needs to be fired all the time. Josh Pastor. You're going to beat people straight up. You know the deal. They have no swag. They have no nothing. Terrell McNeil. From the bluest of the blue bloods to the smallest of the mid majors. This is Field the 68. After that. Christmas morning is here, boys. Christmas morning is here. It is the first day of the NCAA tournament. Rob Dawson, John Henson, Jeff Goodman, Terrence Oglesby. We are live from the Mandalay, Day, Mandalay Bay Sportsbook here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we have a lot to get to. We have 16 games today. 16, 16 teams are going home. 32 teams are playing, ladies and gentlemen. And I could not be more fired up. Goodman, how are we feeling, man? You ready to go? This is awesome. So I, I've never done this. I've never done Vegas for the first round. I've always been on site at games. And I'm kind of torn, but man, it's picking up in here. You can see it, you can feel it. Like, I can't wait for the upset to see how people go berserk here. And I can't wait to see Doster lose a huge bet today. Wow. Yeah, well, all of my bets are going to be the same. First of all, it's early. It's early. Yes. It's early. You can come back. Negativity. You, you can, can come, come back. Right you can come. We have Listen, we don't want to chase too early, but you can come back. <laughs> you can come back from that. And, and here's the other thing. We need positive vibes. Here. All right. I'm all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I want team. everybody to win in this place but you. Okay. That's, the, uh, That's no it. That's fair. I want you to win. You know what? I want you That's going to bring it down. I can already guarantee what's going to happen. He's going to put all of his money. We're going to talk about his favorite bet. Yeah. And he's going to put the biggest bet of the day on that. You know what's going to happen? It's going to be a heartbreaker. The gambling gods, heartbreaker. The gambling gods do not like negativity. All right, all right. I'll, I'll switch it up. I'll switch it up. <laughs> all right, so let's start talking about today's thing because I think that this is my favorite day of the year, right? There's nothing better than when you get those four games going at the same time. Tia, what are you looking forward to the most today? Oh, I'm just happy we're starting to get going. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we've talked about it. We're, we're done with the net, so now we can actually worry about who actually wins freaking games. So that's important. And then I, there's a lot of really good individual matchups that we're going to talk about throughout this day. Uh, a couple of really good guard matchups. One that I, I've keyed on is Colorado State and Texas. Isaiah Stevens against A. Smith and that bunch of guys with Rodney Terry with the Longhorns. I, a lot of really good individual lineups. Uh, and, and let's be honest, guys. This is the best of the best. You can complain about seeding. You can complain about different teams getting in. I thought Seton Hall should have gotten in. But all of that being said, uh, just a lot of really good games today is what I'm looking forward to more than anything else. Go ahead, Ed. I like the competitiveness that potentially could be in the first round. I don't think you're going to see a lot of blowouts. I think it's going to be fun matchups. You know, Texas, Colorado State. Drake, Washington State is going to be fun. I think the first game, Mississippi State and Michigan State, yeah. Yeah. it's going to be a rock fight. But it's going to be a fun, a noon, a noon game with those two defensive, I mean. And with Izzo. With like, Izzo, like, yeah. But that's the other part. You come out of the gate with Tom Izzo in the streak, right? Yeah. And can he get the magic? This was a top, like this was a team a lot of us thought could contend for a Final Four. I, I don't think any of us are there now. But again, can Izzo... Can they put a big-time performance on board today to where, as you think, maybe? I don't think they will. Yeah. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. I think Mississippi State, as good as, they were, as good as they have been this season, we all know Michigan State's front court has been kind of their weak point this year, and they got Tolu Smith, Robbie Hummel's favorite yes. player, which I think is important that we mention. Like, you, know they, you know what they call him? The Drew Timmy of the SEC. That's what they call him. <laughs> he is big. I Numbers all the time. I am players and Josh Hubbard. Here's a player. Oh, five nine five. He's a lefty. He's a he's a bucket. I think he's listed right. at six foot. He yeah. is six foot. No, and then I'm six no. four. I <laughs> I am legitimately worried if Miss as a Carolina Tar Heel, I pray to God we see Michigan State. Really? I I don't want to see. State? I don't want to see Mississippi State. Why would you want Tom Izzo? We have their number, man. We you do listen, have their number. But beat them on the ship. Is, beat them in the ship. We, for some reason, we have their number. There was numbers. a lot of wind on the ship. There's, there's a, on a ship, in a ship. There was a lot of wind. We would see the ball kind of float this way. But you know what? We were a fast break team. We won the game. Both teams shot 30%. But Mississippi State scares me. Size. They've got a dynamic guard that could maybe go toe-to-toe with RJ. So 
Don't want to look ahead, but you know what? You know what it is? It's the big athletic weights. Like, I feel like they have 17 guys in the Mississippi State roster that are like six foot seven, jump on dog defenders. But it's, uh, and Chance can coach. And you're Star- Chance can really you're coach. in Starkville too. You, you're hungry. You, you got you don't get no, the they're like me yeah. You don't get the the the, the love. Start you know, Vegas. Yeah, like, like they're gonna be they're gonna be fired up. If Hubbard played in Kentucky, we'd be talking about a first for sure. Yeah, That's what sure. we would be talking about. He's been that good yep. with Chris Jans. And what do we know about Chris Jans' teams from when he was at New Mexico State? They defend, they rebound the big defensively. Yep. No, they're everything that Tom Izzo's team wants to be, but they isn't. Been. Right. But haven't been. Right. It wouldn't be wild if the first team out of the NCAA tournament this year was Tom Izzo. He just spent, <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys saw it yesterday, uh, in his media availability, Jeff. He told us that he wants, he doesn't like the majors getting in the tournament. He doesn't like the way the conference tournaments are set up. Yeah. Look, Tom, I love you. Don't mess with the tournament. The NCAA tournament is perfect as it is. It's the only sporting event on the planet that is 100% perfect. Okay? Can we just stop messing no, with this? No, it's perfect if they go back to 64. It's perfect if they go back to 64. I mean, you're not putting that genie back in the bottle. So well, no, I know. Izzo, in general, like, he didn't, he wasn't this on board with all this stuff when they were getting championships and winning Big Ten titles. So when things get a little sketchy, you can't just, oh, well, you know, I don't like this. I don't like that. By the way, this is a thing of beauty. Oh, what yeah. I'm looking at right now is a thing of beauty. Yeah. It is every line, everything you possibly want from BetMGM. Bet every numbers. spread, Henson is like, this is Christmas to John. No, I, I'm, I'm about to be walking around with this, like, in my back pocket, like a football coach. <laughs> with my, for my, for call my plays. Call and plays. Right. I call them plays out. I'm, yeah, I'm for sure. Advisor. Yeah, for sure. All of sure. a sudden, Henson's yeah. just going to start, you know, yelling out. He's like, Oakland, I, I plus just, 750. I already sent this to the boys. I said, look, y'all want a chart? We got one for you right here, <laughs> Betty Jim, so that'll be fun. All right, I want to talk about upsets. Everybody loves upsets. There are a lot of potential upsets today. I think that three of the games that I expect double digit seed to win are all happening today. We have Oregon playing South Carolina. We have McNeese State playing Gonzaga later on tonight. We also have Sanford and Kansas. Give me, give me your upset pick of the day. Give me your prediction. Where's I mean, happening? so I, I think everybody is looking at McNeese State today. I think that's the one that everybody's looking at, right? Because it's Will Wade. They know the name. People know a little bit Shahada Wells against a Gonzaga team that, let's face it, they're not your typical Zags team. I'm saying, like, that's the one to stay away from. Don't do it. Everybody's on it. Everybody's on it. Trendy dogs are not good. Right. So stay away from that one. Here's the one. Here's the one for me. (laughs) South Dakota State against Iowa State. I know it sounds bananas, right? It's, it's the 215, which a lot of people love, right? 215 happens. Here's the deal. Eric Henderson, the coach at South Dakota State, you know who, who he replaced? T.J. Otzelberger, the coach that he's going to face today at Iowa State. Iowa State has completely outkicked its coverage all year. They've done an incredible job. T.J. Otzelberger has been maybe national coach of the year. I just saw him. They blitzed Houston. They crushed them. I just wonder if they're starting to feel themselves a little much. And again, I think they're primed. I think they're primed to be beat. And South Dakota State has an elite guard, an elite guard named Zeke Mayo, who can take over a game. So Iowa State goes down to the Big 12 tournament. Iowa State, who we have doubted all year, beats Houston, number one team in the country, by 28 points. Mm-hmm. He's the great off more than the 41, right? It wasn't even competitive. Right. And what do they get for it? Jeff Goodman saying they've outkicked the coverage. And I love them. And, not and I love them. Well, I, I do. From a, from a, right. from a perspective, though, of just they won the tournament. They're feeling themselves. They've outkicked their coverage. Anything they do this year is going to be a success. If they lose yeah. in the first round, <laughs> we had a good year. Losing to a big team. But we had a good year. We won the Big 12. We had a good year. I just don't think the gap. The talent gap is as big as people think. All I'm saying is 15 and a half is a ton. And we see these 15s pull off these upsets. Yeah. Nobody's talking about this one. And Eric Henderson knows T.J. Otzelberger and what he runs and what he does better than anybody. He was his assistant. I'm, I'm, I'm going to listen. I love that. I will be betting on them to cover them. Okay. And, and that, that's what I would do. I don't I'm saying, cover. hey, I, I might not go full money line with a lot. I, Thousand, thousand, you know, you could, you sprinkle, a thousand. sprinkle, sprinkle. No, 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 no. The, the money line's a thousand fifty. All right, all right. I'm all not putting right. a thousand. I thousand, thousand. A thousand. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, a little sprinkle, fifty dollars, hundred bucks. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good there. 
A um, couple of things. Samford playing at altitude against Kansas. Kansas is limping into this tournament. Hunter Dickinson, I'm healthy enough to play. That, that, it's a little cause for concern. Yeah. Color out for the tournament. Uh, so how did you well, – hold on. How did you read that quote? Because I took that as I'm healthy enough to play and help my teammates. Meaning it's a shot at Kevin McCullough? That's the way I – But, but I, he retweeted. I, I, he tweeted something – positive about okay, McCullough, so I, I don't saw, think it was. I didn't see the video. I, yeah. I was on the plane when I saw yeah, it. I, I don't think it I, I, I was going to talk about the McCullough situation. I don't feel like Bill Self protected him. I, I don't like that as a coach because when I played, Coach Williams would, oh, he he would protect, would protect you. you like yeah. no other, and no matter what. It. And Bill Self's comments like, well, he doesn't feel good. I personally had a bone bruise before. I swear to God, it's a two-month in recovery. Really? Now, you're going to feel it. You're gonna feel it for you're not when you come back, right? Like, it hurts, and it's gonna, it, it just hurts. And it was a two month recovery for me. So, him playing on it, going out, I know exactly. Knees probably swelling a little bit. He could probably play, but I'm sure the agents are in his ear. First round potential pick. Kansas isn't where they were. I think he's made a business decision, and then that is Gross. what it is. Whole thing's gross. Yeah. But, guys, even going back to November, December, we were worried about Kansas' death. Yep. And yeah. are they going to be healthy enough to compete the entire year? And there was a conversation we all had in early January. Kansas has to get lucky with their health. Because if they're not, it could go south in a hurry because Timberlake hasn't been as good as what a lot of people thought he was going to be. El Marco Jackson hasn't been as good as what a lot of people thought he was going to be in year one. Like, Keep in mind, too, they're six, maybe seven deep against the Sanford team that's playing ten deep, running up and down. A chore and chore has been as good as advertised, yeah. and Jermaine Marshall is this junkyard dog he's type tough, player man. who's tough, yep. long arms, broad shoulders. He's going to be able to compete physically with K.J. Adams and at least stretch him out a little bit. Sanford and Bucky Ball, that, that's a dangerous game. It, it, I don't know what the spread is here. I'm trying to sit here looking seven at Seven and a half, I think it went down. half. Kansas's way, that feels gross. I feel like, if nothing else, Sanford's going to be able to keep it a little bit closer than that. How, how, the Duquesne BYU. I, I, I'm, I'm teetering. Like teeter, I don't know. How, how do you guys feel about it? So here, here's the thing. Yeah. I actually feel really good about Duquesne. You can't feel really good about anybody playing BYU, first of all. You can't feel really good. Like, because if they make their shots. I'm talk, the spread's nine and a half, right? I know, but they but could, they no, could win by 25 if they make their threes or I mean, that's all I'm saying. Are, you, with are, you ready, are you ready to let me say what I'm yes. saying? Yes. Are we ready? Go ahead. Do Go I ahead. have the floor? Go ahead. Am I allowed to speak? Go. <laughs> so, um, more, pretty, uh, pretty. BYU takes more than 50% of their shots, their field goal attempts from beyond the arc, right? They're second in terms of three point rate. And what Duquesne does is they bump people off the three point line. They are, uh, they are, they were the number one team in the Atlantic 10 at three point defensive field goal percentage rate, right? Ooh. And they also were uh, were the best in three point uh, three point shooting. So it's not only did they run people off the line, but they have them to twenty nine point five percent three point shooting. Like, that's what they do. They got a bunch of athletes. They run you off the three point line. They don't let you kind of run the stuff that you want to run. And they're nine and twenty four to the under, which mm -hmm. rings true. They they must take twos. Don't yes. give up threes. Yeah. So they they're gonna. They want to muck it up, right? They want to make it ugly, and I think they, they have the athletes to be able to do it. And the one thing about BYU, and we see this with Creighton a little bit, we see it a little bit with, uh, with Purdue, right, is if you can get them out of what they want to run, they don't really have the guys to be able to just go out and make a play. And I think Duquesne can do that. I don't think they're going to win. I think I have is a lot of points for well, a game. Well, I think it's like worth rolling the dice. Yes. Yes. I, I definitely think that because, again, BYU is usually all or nothing. Right, right? And, mm -hmm. and why not? I mean, to me, it's more of a money line play than anything. Why not? Right. Take a shot on it. And if BYU well, goes for it, I, I've seen I will. It. I'm, I'm betting every single Dog, money right. line, uh, underdog I, money I line throughout the entire a, tournament. I think there's a stat. I think last year, if you bet $100 on every money line or underdog money line, you were up like $1,200, but you were 39 and like 60 yeah. So that's you exactly. still were up. That's exactly. That's exactly. You what lost I'm doing. forty times. So. That's exactly what I'm. I'm. I'm banking on right here. We're already up eighty-five dollars in the first two games of the. Hey, look. You know what? That might cover a beer and a half over here at uh, Mille Bay. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, T.O., you got any take on Duquesne BYU? I think BYU can shoot the ball. I think Pope has done a good job with that team. I think BYU can make a run in this tournament. I don't buy that one so much. I feel like Duquesne. They had their run through the A10 tournament. Good for him for. Having that last one as he slips into retirement, uh, BYU wins this game, and I, I think BYU wins a couple of games. 
<laughs> oh man, our producer is an Illinois fan. We got the Moorhead State Eagles hat on right there. We will talk about Illinois Moorhead State coming up next. We're going to talk about Kentucky. They are playing. And also, my favorite upset of the day is an 11 6 that is not Duquesne over BYU. That will be coming up next. The best month of the year is here, which is why you need to know that we are now partnered with BetMGM. We'll be using BetMGM lines to make all of our picks, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68 all through the NCAA tournament. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, you can use the bonus code FIELD, and you will get up to a $1,500 first bet offer on your first wager with BetMGM, regardless of whether or not that bet is hits here's the best part all you need to do is deposit and bet ten dollars of your hard-earned money this is how you make it work download the bet mgm app and sign up using the bonus code field deposit at least ten dollars and place your first wager on any game and you get up to fifteen hundred dollars in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your bet just make sure you use that bonus code field when you sign up most importantly we do have some fun stuff coming for the conference tournaments and especially for the ncaa tournament bet insurance tokens college hoops odds boost and what i love the most a nice parlay boost for anything you could possibly imagine betting on in the ncaa tournament from odds and getting an at-large bid to final four futures to the highest seed to make to the sweet 16 i'm calling it right now bet mgm is the king of the prop bet for your march madness needs so go download the bet mgm app use the code field and sign up today and while i've got you a quick request the best way to support the field of 68 and our content you get for free is to engage with us rate and review the pod like and share the youtube videos tell your friends about us it helps in a world where the algorithm is king and now back to the show back to the field of 68 ncaa tournament pregame show it is thursday we are ready we are live on youtube we are live on stadium uh we will be live again tonight at midnight on stadium on youtube on sirius xm channel 84 that's college sports radio john henson uh we are live at Mandalay Bay here in Las Vegas. Um, bet MGM flew us out. It's nice to be out here. I'm ready to make some bets. I'm fired up to get this thing going. Here is my underdog pick of the day, right? And they're not, you know what? They're not even an underdog. My upset of the day is the favorite in this game, CEO. Oregon. Jermaine Goose in our revenge half. game? It's flipped. My, I like, it's flipped. Oregon's the favorite now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my favorite upset pick isn't even an upset pick. Yeah. The Ducks. CEO's mad at me. Not at all. T.O. <laughs> loves them. They, no, and after the I got South Carolina. Don't play oh, me with a good wow. time. I'm going to have to bet on South Carolina. I got They're South the Carolina. underdog. I'm going to have to bet on them. I got so, South so Carolina. So All-Stars. South Carolina, so, Lamont so, Paris. So, T.O., talk to me about this matchup. I know you're a South Carolina guy. You yeah. live in the state. Uh, you had Lamont Paris as National Coach of the Year. You think that he should be hired by uh, by the Charlotte Hornets to take over that, <laughs> that organization. <laughs> Talk to me about this matchup. I, I hope nobody gets hired by anybody in the Charlotte Hornets organization. <laughs> That's not my call, nor do I want it to be. However, uh, no, I think Lamont's done a great job. What, what worries me about this Oregon team is we knew most of their really good players were their young players. Right. And, right. and now with Jackson Shellstad, with some of these other guys, uh, Kwame Evans, like mm -hmm. They've gotten better as the year goes on. And when you have these super talented guys, it takes a couple of months for them to get going. And what better time for them to really click than the conference tournament where they play their way into the big dance. They're playing as well as anybody right now. And the fact that uh, Jermaine Cousinard gets to play against his old squad, I think they're going to come in super motivated. And I think Oregon's playing as well as anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is a pick em game. This yeah, really is. is a pick em game. And, and the spread reflects it. You know, Oregon really didn't play well most of the year, but they've been banged up now for the second straight year. Like Theo said, Shellstead's a stud. Yes. You know, the, the problem is, again, Nefali Dante wasn't healthy for a big stretch. He, he'll be the best big man on the court tonight. Yes. But, again, does Oregon have enough behind them? Do they have enough depth? Have they done enough? South Carolina's been good pretty much from start to finish. One of the best stories of the college basketball season. The other thing I always look at, when I'm looking at, at making picks in the NCAA tournament, I look at the coaches. And I say, Dana Altman's been there. He's done it over and over and over. Lamont Paris still a relative Oh, I can't say that. March matchups. Um, I'm, I'm right, sorry. I think Since South Carolina has been critically undervalued all year. The There's a reason that they're 23 to 10 against the spread. They've been undervalued. Now that they flip to the dogs, I think that's a perfect spot. 
Um, Oregon's been playing well as of late as we've documented, but every time we've thought South Carolina was kind of down and out, they, they come back with a fierceness. So I think today, coming to the tournament, that chip is still on the shoulder. This is your pick of the day? Like one of them? This, this, is, my, this is on my ticket. South Carolina, money line. Yep. So, yes, right. I put my money where my mouth is on this. Right. They've also had huge wins this year at Tennessee. Yeah. They beat Kentucky at home. Like, they're, they're battle-tested, the South Carolina. And they're old. They take care of the that basketball. League, that league is so much better than the Pac-12. It's not even close. I, I, and do you remember, do you remember what happened the last time we were in this situation, though? The last time that Oregon made a run through the Pac-12 tournament to win an automatic bid and become a bid field. Do you remember what happened? I remember what happened. Final yeah. four. Do you remember what happened? No. Nope. You remember? Final four. Yeah. Four, right? No, it was two years after that. It was 2019, mm-hmm. right? It was Peyton Pritchard. He was a point guard. Mm-hmm. They beat Wisconsin as a 12 seed in the first round. They beat UC Irvine, the 13 seed in the second round. They made it to the Sweet 16 where they lost to Virginia by four in a game that they led by six with like three minutes left in that game. It's a lot before, of details. Yeah, before. a lot. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I, I have no idea. I can't remember I what can't I had for breakfast. breakfast. That's pretty good, Doster. Yeah. So that's why Doster just I'm, played I'm the I'm in on this Oregon team. I'm in, I'm in on the big I mean, who knows if it's actually accurate, though. <laughs> it is. I just brought it up on Ken Pump to make sure that I was right. See, as you can see, it is right there. I made sure I was right. Um, I think that they can make a run. And the biggest thing you just mentioned it. The freshman guards aren't freshmen anymore. They're basically right. sophomores. Yes. And the follow Dante's healthy. Like, that's what you need in this in, right now in college basketball. Big-time big guard. They can play, and guards are going to play like big-time guards. I just feel like South Carolina has been through the, I think they're going to be so refreshed seeing a team that's different from these bang, these SC teams that are really good. Like, I, I just think I think they might I think they might take care of it. But, hey, know, what, what's – I want to ask him this because he, he played in the tournament multiple times at the highest level. Yes. What's the most important thing now? If I said to you, you have to have this to make a run, what is the – I've always said point guard play. Yeah. Now, it might have changed over the years. What, what's the most important thing? I think not staying in the moment. A lot of times teams, especially when we would play as a number one seed, they, they get they start doing stuff they don't usually do. They start – taking shots, they get on the ropes, and then, and then, and then it just splinter, just yeah. everything falls. So I think the biggest thing for us was staying within ourselves and understanding the goal is to win. I think some teams today you're going to see teams that maybe haven't been there, South Carolina, things get rocky. Sure. It could go south fast. So I think that was the biggest thing for us, just doing what got you there. And you know the goal is to win. So you have to have good chemistry going in. Basically. Experience, good chemistry. Yeah. You're going to have a, there's going to be a run, and I, I say this all the time, I think the scary, not the scariest part, but the part that got us a little rocky was when that team was making a run, and the crowd's buzzing, coach has got to call the timeout, it's not going how you think, that's when things change, and so as a team, we, we had to push through that, and we lost in the lead eight both years, so, you know, we did all right, so that, that's the biggest thing. Let's talk about some of these three seeds. We got three three seeds in action. We haven't really seen. We've seen a lot of uh, fifteen over twos. We've seen sixteen over ones. The three losing to a fourteen is not something that's happened all that often. We have Creighton, Akron. We have Illinois, Moorhead State, and we have Kentucky, Oakland. To you going to get an upset in any of those games? Are you worried about any of them? Uh, the the only thing that worries me a little bit, and Trevor's going to hate me, is Moorhead State and Coach Preston Spradlin. Whenever he goes into tournament settings, and I saw it last year in the NIT, whenever they beat the brakes off of Clemson in Clemson, like he throws caution to the wind as far as what he's going to call defensively, as far as scheming things. He's going to make your worst player beat him. And whenever you do that, that can make you a little bit nervous. He'll pack it in. He'll run a triangle in two. He'll put a guy down at the charge circle and be like, dare you to shoot it. Uh, who's your weakest link? Is your weakest link for Illinois going to be able to beat Moorhead State? Because Preston Spradlin's going to put you in that position to do it. Preston's a really good coach. And I and that worries me a little bit, especially when you rely so heavily on two guys to create offense for themselves. They're going to load up on those guys. So who's going to be that fourth and fifth option? Because we know Coleman Hawkins, we know Terrence Shannon, we know Marcus Domask. Those other guys have to have a good game in order to beat Moorhead. And I'm not quite sure if they can do that. I don't see much. I mean, I, I, I I'm looking Throw at this the, one on. I'm, I'm this looking, is the answer. I'm looking. That's the right answer. Is this the, this Akron? Putting this away. I saw Akron play <laughs> West. I saw Akron play Western Michigan. I watched the whole game. They lost. Okay. 
They don't. Def- they didn't defend. I don't think they defended a high clip. And they're playing against a Creighton team that's kind of the dark horse pick for the Final Four. Mm-hmm. That and my pick for the Final Four has beaten the best team in the field pretty good. So I don't see many three. Four, uh, Kentucky as well, right? Kentucky three four. Yeah, I think Kentucky's the that's same. that's the one that I I circled as like okay. Oakland? We want to keep an eye on this. Because Oakland? Oakland's got a couple dudes that can light it up, right? Yeah. And the one thing we've seen with Kentucky is that the defensive issues, that right? Don't mess and with that. <laughs> it's, it's just that, that's one where I can see Oakland putting up 100. And if it's one, if, if you get bad Rob Dillingham or you get, you know. Or you, you, get, you get off to a good lead. And yeah. then these, these young Kentucky dudes, how do they react? Yeah, you get down by 12 early. Do they get nervous? Are they able to handle Even it? Even the old dudes. Yeah. It's not like Reeves has had any success. And, and yeah. I think that's a team that could get out of character potentially. I would um, agree. I because think they have a lot of pro- 150 points today. 100, well, that's 150 the other thing. points. Yeah. What are we I don't think there's an in-between you've, yeah, you've been covering the NBA too much. The 150 <laughs> points. Because they are going to be so pumped up and so motivated. Yeah. Like, Reed Shepard, Dillingham, they're going to go nuts. Shot they're out of a cannon. So much. They're going to be shot out of a cannon. They they're going to be so excited. I'm not worried about Kentucky today. I might be worried about Kentucky on Saturday. That rebound game. Today against Oakland, they're going to be as fired up as they're going to be pretty much all season long. They've got so many weapons offensively. I'm not worried about today. I'm not worried about Calipari's tweaks. I'm worried about Saturday. <laughs> all right, I'm worried can about we, Saturday. Can we get so, a prediction so, on the tweaks? So Cal is just, Cal's going to roll the ball out, and they're going to pick it up, and he's going to just – Let's get a know. prediction on what this tweak actually is. I bet he plays Big Z at the four. I, I bet there's absolutely nothing. That's what I was going to say. There's no nothing. tweak. Come there's on. absolutely Come nothing. On. Is I think there you, ever a tweak? No. There's never a tweak. There's going to be a, you there think might he's be one guy two, that switches. You think he's going to play two seven-footers together? Maybe at times. Which with and then he's going to realize it doesn't work. Yeah, but with Avicic, <laughs> yeah. you can kind of make it work anyway because he shoots the ball. Do you like, know what's going to happen to them defensively yeah. if they play Avicic so alongside like Aaron Bradshaw? It's not going to work. I actually would prefer... You know, it's a little late now, but I feel like if he just gets in and presses because he knows he's not going to play a lot and he has to prove that he should be in, I think Kyle got a short leashes him. So if he does give him some consistent, like, hey, you're going to play, we could see the performance like we had the first time. You know, so first time we played. So. Can I get to my zips? Get to your zips. Go ahead. Get to Gross. the zips. I mean, Gross. They, got a, the they got a double, walking double-double and Enrique Freeman. He's good. Well, they, tell they a story. Tell a story. How many comes right here? Year? What's up? He's playing the Indian's conference, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, found really him in a cafeteria. Tell his story. Go ahead. They found him in a cafeteria. Is that right? He was walking around, and then they asked him to come to walk-on trials. He qualifies, and then becomes yeah. a walk-on, and now he's what yeah, the he's leading right. rebounder in the country, yeah. leading double double. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's he's a walking double double. Ali Ali's back after it didn't work out for him at Butler. He came back. I don't. Here's my take with Creighton. They got lucky. Everybody's as hell in their on them again, right? Now. Everybody's riding Creighton again because they've been really good the second half of the year, and they are good. But they have four guys. They have four guys. Let's be honest, right? And one of those guys, Stephen Ashworth, was awful early. Mm-hmm. And if he doesn't play well and they don't shoot the ball well, they're susceptible. That's all I'm saying. Is like we're marking them down like Creighton the Final Four and, and through this game. This is a dangerous game for them. The only thing that I'll say is I think that their floor is so much higher than some of these other teams sure. because of how good they are defensively and the fact that they do not foul. They just well, don't foul. One guy foul. really doesn't foul. They don't foul. Like, one guy Cal, really Cal doesn't, foul. doesn't foul. And I think they're like they're they're like top five, maybe number one in the country in terms of foul. Like, they don't foul. Yeah. The yeah. whole thing is they just don't foul. And when you combine that with the fact that in the tournament you're going to get some of those longer TV timeouts, you get an extra TV timeout. Like, I don't think that they need a bench, right? This is not about them getting tired. I think they're going to be just fine. Play, like, you can play those four guys 40 minutes. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Can you do that? Can you do that in the tournament? Can you yes. go with five guys? I don't primarily? even remember being any type of tired. I don't even Ever? remember. I don't know. I mean, you're, the TV you're, you're like so T.O. said, no, you're, just, right? you're running off of yeah, yeah this is the last run. Like, yeah. you're, you're, I remember you're being like, exhausted. For really? The they, at least the first four <laughs> to six minutes of the game. I remember being exhausted. But then, then that you, had more to do. Had more to do with us doing like seven practices leading up to the two game, we, to the fucking game. <laughs> we, <laughs> that's, a whole, that's a whole other story. Because <laughs> Oliver got Oliver so mad at us, he lost his mind. 
<laughs> we practiced and practiced and practiced. He kicked us out. We had to fly down to Tampa. We did a full practice, did the whole practice. Over. It's a long story. <laughs> the coaches have to manage fatigue. Roy, Roy didn't do that. Roy, Roy didn't well, do that. our philosophy from the beginning of the season was we're playing for April, 15. not December. And so that's how we practice. Yep. Sure. All right, listen, when we get back, we're going to dive in a little bit more to Illinois taking on Moorhead State. We need to find out if Trevor's going to be crying by the end of the day because we want him to stay for the whole week. We'll be back. By now, you guys have surely heard about Autograph, an app founded by Tom Brady with the intention of disrupting the way that fans consume content covering their favorite teams. This is how the app works. All of the podcasters, bloggers, and digital creators covering a team have their content sent to that team's page in the Autograph app. Instead of having to bounce from site to site or trying to navigate the safer workspaces on Twitter, you can just scroll through Autograph. This isn't a hard sell. This is the truth. I am a UConn fan, and I use the Autograph app to keep up with the writers I read and the pods that I listen to about UConn basketball. The best part is that every piece of content that you consume gives you reward points. The more you get, the more chances you have at things like discounted tickets to games and the grand prize, a trip to the LA Regional and a spot in a suite for the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight games. Here's the best part. We've partnered with Autograph to donate $1 to the V Foundation every time someone downloads the app using the code F68 with a minimum of $2,500 getting donated. The app is free. So download, use the code F68, help us raise a little bit of money for cancer research and give Autograph a try. I promise you it will be worth it. And while we're here, a quick reminder, make sure that you subscribe to The Daily. We have new landing pages with deep dives into each coaching change, as well as a tracker that provides scouting reports on the transfers that have entered the portal that you are going to want to know about. Hit the link below to subscribe. Welcome back to the Field of 68 After Breakfast here at Mandalay Bay Sportsbook in Las Vegas. After Starbucks with no sweetener, apparently. Yeah, T.O., for the people watching at home, T.O. got very upset with me because I didn't give him three pumps of hazelnut. I, I was going to say, Need three T.O. Pumps said he wanted three pumps of hazelnut Need cream. that. I'm gonna let the folks at home. I'm gonna let the folks at home take that for what it is. Hazelnut. <laughs> it was just a lot to see waking up in a tank. Yeah. <laughs> First thing in the morning is you wake up. To <laughs> three pumps. I need three pumps of cream. It, yeah. Hey, it's better than what he orders. Please explain to the people what Please. you get every time you get coffee. It's I don't Goodman know orders do a milkshake every yeah, time we go. And anywhere. then he gets he says low fat and skim milk. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just don't understand. I don't, it. I don't I get it. Let me get a Big Mac, but a diet I, I, yeah, milk. I was like, so wait, so you're getting mocha extra milk? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't put two, it doesn't matter. I feel good about myself doing it. I feel better. Grande too. You got the big. Oh, yeah. Do you know how many squirts of mocha they put in the, your? Uh... There it is. It's good. I mean, this <laughs> put, is... She went over there. There's no coffee. Like, in there. Dark <laughs> A lot of mocha. All right. Um, real quick on Illinois before we talk about our favorite individual matchups of the day uh, of the day today. Um, are you worried at all about them defensively, Jeff? Like that's the big question with them. Can they've they been guard? better lately. So they've been better. Again, they've got their warts. We know what their warts are, right? It's still their point guard play isn't what we what we want it to be, right? They don't have a traditional point guard. That's that's the hardest part for me is Shannon has to do so much. And now he's got some help now. Domask has been awesome this year. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see that coming. Steady coming. force. You still got Coleman Hawkins. You go in with those three, you say to yourself, I'll take our three against almost anybody's three in the country. Mm -hmm. But again, so much is still to me on Terrence Shannon initiating the offense. Nobody makes it easier for him. So I, they're going to win this game. I don't think they lose this one. But going forward, it's still their defense isn't what it should be, especially with their talent. Like they've got great, I mean, other than Domas, they've got really good individual defenders. Yeah. And they were so bad. So what does that say about it? It's an effort thing. It's an effort. It's an effort. It's right. a focus. Yeah. It's a paying attention thing. It's an understanding the scouting report thing. I kind of want them to get a scare today. I kind of think they need a scare. I, I think they've never been able to handle prosperity over the years. Whenever we lift them up, yeah. they fall right back down. And coming off the Big Ten Championship, I wonder, is there a letdown spot? Because that's just been their MO. So we'll see. I think they win this game. But we they're a top three seed. We yeah, need them second, second weekend. weekend. Yeah, we need right. second weekend right. 
It would Potentially be a final. disappointment if they don't get to the second weekend right. this year. I think the thing where they're going to run into more trouble is BYU. Uh, just with the way that BYU runs offense. Yeah, that'll be a yeah. great game, yeah. though, yeah. of, of uh, yeah. contracts in, in styles. Yeah. That would yeah. be a great game to one watch. One team that wants to do everything one-on-one -on -one, and the other team that wants to just run set after set after set after set after set and try to get as many threes up as possible. All right, I want to talk about individual matchups because there's a lot of really fun one-on-one, -on -one, guard versus guard matchups that we have in this tournament. T.O., I'm going to you this first. This tournament this or this, this, this today, today? Today, today, today. Okay. Who are you? What are you looking forward to the most? Because there's one that stands out to me more than anything else. Well, there was one. I think I already mentioned Isaiah Stevens, Max A. Smith, the whole Texas backcourt. That's a big one. Uh, an intriguing front court matchup between Nevada's bigs and Deron Holmes at Dayton. Uh, I, that's kind of an underrated one. Yep. Uh, Nick Davidson's a really good player. Grew up a Nevada kid. Uh, six nine makes that team work. He really, he, he does a little bit of everything for that team. And KJ Himes is like thirty years old, and you need that big, burly, physical dude uh, to go up against Holmes. So that's another one to keep an eye on. Uh, and then Shahada Wells and McNeese, and all the guards for Gonzaga. I think that's one to keep an eye on. I, there's a lot of great individual matchups today. It, mm -hmm. Those are the three that I would pick out, just kind of looking at it quickly, but. Uh, I think Nevada and Dayton. I think Dayton was overseeded, to be honest with you. Yeah, you could have flipped them. You could have flipped those if you guys. Put the, 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 if you put Dayton as the 10 and Nevada at the 7, no one would have complained. Yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah. You're right. So it would be it's tomato, yeah. tomato, really, but when it comes to that. But I think the front court matchup between those two teams is going to be big. Jeff? You know, he mentioned it earlier. To me, it's Isaiah Stevens and Max Hayes. That's, That's the, one. the one you got to watch for because those are two dynamic guards. Those are two of the most fun guards to watch in the entire country. Right, Isaiah Stevens, it's like watching a video game. Yeah. And Max Aismas, when he gets going, which we saw it a few years ago at Oral Roberts, he can go for 30 or 35. So that's the one that, like, to me, is going to have people in here going absolutely crazy if they get going matching buckets. And Isaiah Stevens can, can match bucket if he wants to, but he makes his team so much. I mean, he is he's exceptional to watch. I'm going to go a little bit under the radar. Pop Isaacson, DJ Horn. I think that's going to be a game. That that matchup's going to determine the game. Mm -hmm. You know, if Horn gets going, he's tough to stop. The same with Isaac. So those are my. That's my kind of under the radar matchup. That'll be a fun one to watch coming this evening. DJ Burns against the world. Yeah. Right. DJ Burns against, DJ Burns against the world yeah. against everybody. Yeah. Walking uh, refrigerator with ballerina yeah. feet. Yeah. yeah. When he he's going to be the guy. Like there's two guys that I think have a chance to be able to come out of this tournament and be just like internet viral mm -hmm. sensations. One of them is DJ Burns. The other one is Ali Khalifa. If the either, other one is? Ali Khalifa at BYU. Yep. If NC State or BYU somehow makes it the second weekend, like one of those guys is going to have a great game and everybody's going to fall in love with them. Because who doesn't love watching a dude? Baby Zemo. That is, yeah, that, is, that is big. That is 6'10". That is 280, 300 pounds. It is built like Jeff Goodman on a bad day. <laughs> Those, those well, are going to be the two guys that I think everybody uh, will Khalifa along. hasn't been doing anything but playing games this year, right? Like, yeah. he's had some injury concerns. Uh, no, and he just let it, He's not practicing all that much. I saw him practice two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. so he did. He, he's got through some. I mean, I'm sure they've kept him out because, again, and the good thing is in practice, it's not like he's going full speed. True. Well, maybe he is, but he, he might be going full speed. Full speed just, full speed just isn't very fast. Right, right. There was one game I was watching where uh, – where he was kind of trailing the play, and ball, the ball was in front of him, and the ball got stolen by the other team's guard, and he had probably 15 feet on the other team's guard, and he went around and started sprinting, and before the guy even went past him, he just gave up. He's like, I got no shot to get in front of this guy. <laughs> got to know yourself, DJ. Yeah. Yeah. He knows his own scouting yeah. report. I will give you credit for that. Um, here's one that we're not talking about at all. Tucker DeVries. Yes, we haven't Washington mentioned State. them. I yet. love. We haven't mentioned Tucker DeVries of Washington State. Welcome to Washington State. is great against Washington State, but Tucker DeVries is the best player on that team, right? And Washington State, I do think, has been a little bit underrated this season. We haven't paid enough attention to them because they're in the Pac-12, because they are Washington State. Break this game down. For me. How do you think? Can Tucker DeVries go for 30? Is he the mid-major star coming out of today's um, today's games? Um, 
I love white guys, guys at the hoop. So. <laughs> I like watching guys. I love that. Like, Mark, Mark Titus said that, that this year, 2024, in college basketball, is the year of the cold ass white boy. No, we got Kevin like, Smith. Like, like, we got Tony Smith. We got Tucker when you Reed. see when they got when they get in their bag and, and <laughs> they get a bucket. Like he's the same way. He can take over games. He was unstoppable in the Indiana State game. They couldn't stop him. That's why they lost. Um, he's a player that could be a household name as well. If that a run. Um, I think last year we thought they were going to do a little something, and they kind of disappointed us. They, all, they were up like eight with like five minutes left against game, Miami, right? It was terrible. Yep, he had a terrible game. Yep. Awful. So I talked to him a couple weeks ago, and, and he said he's like, "I got to make up for what I didn't do last year." Mm -hmm. I got, and he's got a completely different team around him now. He's become more of a facilitator now than he was a year ago, and I think that helps take some of the pressure off that he doesn't feel like he has to go for 30 mm -hmm. for them to win this game. And again, with Washington State, kind of like South Carolina to some degree, they probably overachieved a little bit, partially mm -hmm. because it's been in the Pac-12. And Miles Rice, talk about great stories. Yes. Yeah. A guy who missed, I mean, he, he, he overcame, he fought cancer, he's gotten through it, he's had an unbelievable year after being off for two years. I mean, what an incredible story that is. We got some great storylines today, too, that I'd love to go through before we finish the game. That that might be number one, Miles Rice yes. playing in this tournament and not only playing, being a star for Washington State. Yeah, I agree. I, I think if there's one story that should be shined on more than all the rest, it's that one. Uh, Tucker DeVries, I think it's interesting. He's been the best player on the floor wherever he's gone for the past two years, mm -hmm. and then this year, you, you alluded to him being more of a playmaker. His assist rate's up around 20%. Like, that comes with being an older guy and getting really comfortable within a scheme and within a system. Uh, and it helps when you play with your dad, too, because you get that extra little bit of information of when guys are going to cut, when guys are going to be open. It's ingrained in him. So I, I do think I have Drake winning this game in a battle for Iowa in round two, yeah. which I think is going to be yeah, pretty cool. Be a good one. It'll be cool because it's just right down the road from both schools. <laughs> uh, no, he's the best player. I think his maturity – is stated with that assist rate to go on top of that. Yeah, I think having that experience from last year as well, it's going to calm him down. Yep. And I, I think the biggest thing when I was playing was like understanding, being there before, and having that calmness because that, that matters. Because you got a locker room full of guys that's never been there. You're going to be Washington like Kentucky State. and win, or you're going to be like Kentucky and lose. Right. Yep. You know, so it's, but that's uh, Washington State. None of yep. those guys have been there. For sure. None of them have been there. A lot of them are mid major players who transferred out, junior college players. The, the lights are going to be bright, and it's like, how did you react that first year? Like We were in NIT, so it wasn't much reaction. But, <laughs> That's um, right. That's we right. started, uh, you know, the first year we got in there, um, I was fortunate enough to have some championship guys on my freshman team. So that just helped me out as far as just understanding how to play postseason play, preparing mentally, and being serious about your approach, and carried me through my years. What is... What is that week leading up to the tournament like? Like, is it miserable if you, you've played for Oliver Purnell? <laughs> <laughs> um, no fun. You know, <laughs> it it's, it's, uh, it's you are who you are as a team, in my opinion. And so it's about getting healthy, getting rest, trying to stay in a routine, and just taking it game by game. And, Sound uh, like a coach. That's just how. That's just how. It, that's how we. That's how we approached but, it. But, like, but, okay, but also had Coach Williams, who you know got. You know, he it's, it's, a little, it's a little different for you because you played at North Carolina. Exactly. So, like, you, you guys are used to the attention. Yeah. But for some of these other guys, like, they're, I'm sure there's a lot of players here that are getting more – there are more faces at press conferences. There's more cameras than they've ever seen before. There's more questions than they've ever gotten. How many of them have ever sat up on a stage right. and gone to an actual press conference like this on with, like, na national television? We used broadcast. to just pray that you try to play in our style of play so we can run you out of it. We just probably pray that you can trick you into our stuff. And, and so you just didn't have a chance. Kind of like Alabama, go down 10 points. Oh, you guys want to start playing back and forth and playing Ole defense? Now mm -hmm. we're up 10, game over shot. I, I think it's different for those guys yeah. than it is for the rest of college basketball. Yeah. Because right. they're going to do what they're going to do no matter what, at least at that point. Now, Hubert's changed some things up, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit different. But I, I think by and large, a lot of teams are scrambling to adjust to what they're going to see in game one, mm -hmm. and then you hope that you know enough of who you are by game two, if that makes sense. Right. Like, 
at Clemson, it was tough because we were what we were. We didn't focus a whole lot on adjustments, but we also didn't have the talent necessarily that a North Carolina did with seven McDonald's All-Americans. We had Trevor Booker and Casey Rivers, and quite frankly myself, who were good players, but we weren't, I mean, I'm just being honest here. We you couldn't overwhelm somebody with talent. We weren't lottery picks. I hated playing they the could over, They could overwhelm people. We had to enforce our will and hope that we didn't run into Jay Wright or John, or John B. Long. So it was kind of twofold. Like, you want to adjust. It's different for them because they were going to be able to do whatever they wanted. For us, we're hoping to adjust a little bit and get hot at the right time, which, let's be honest, I mean, it's a coin flip for a lot of teams. Yeah. I just love how T.O. says, and quite frankly, myself, I was really good. That's right. Quite frankly, right. right. I was a bucket. I uh, listen, I, I remember T.O. I remember that Clemson. T like, they were good. What I remember about T.O. was him going up and missing a dunk and having the angle where you see him miss the dunk and it zooms in on Oliver Pinnell going like this. <laughs> and over this place. When we come back, we're going to talk about our best bets of the day. We're going to talk about the best plays of the day and the best games. That's next. There is nothing better in sports than tournament time, which is why I need to tell you guys about our partners over at Rhythm. If you're into sports betting, you need Rhythm, the place for data-backed props and picks. For those that are unfamiliar, Rhythm, spelled R-I-T-H-M-M, -M, is the go-to mobile app for player props and game picks. Backed by AI predictive models, Rhythm helps you make smarter and faster betting decisions across all sports, but particularly college basketball. With Rhythm, you get data-backed picks for every single Division I game, every single Single day users get free picks daily with the ability to upgrade to unlimited access. If you want to increase your edge and win more bets, go to the link in the description and download Rhythm today. That's R I T H M M, the place for data backed props and picks. And while we're here, let me tell you about our newest partner for the month of March, Splash Sports, the home of certified community competition where you get to play against your friends and not the house. Whatever game it is that you are playing, from survivors to tiers to pick X, the safest way to play for real money without the hassle of having to track down deposits or worry about payments is through Splash. They have partnered with PaySafe, the best deposit and payment system in the world, to ensure that money stays in safe hands and is delivered to the right places. To join the Field of 68 Survivor Madness, Click the link in our profile below and join in. Entries are five bucks a pop with a prize pool of up to $4,500. Winner take all. Join Splash and come prove that you're smarter than us. I got a story live. Welcome back to the Field of 68's after breakfast pregame show here at Mandalay Bay Sportsbook live in Las Vegas. Terrence Oglesby, Jeff Goodman, John Henson. My name is Rob Doster. We have less than 30 minutes, boys. Less than 30 minutes until this game starts. I got to hit my bets. You can see the line here behind us right now. There's a lot of people in line. I, I went make, early. Yeah, he, he went early. He got his bet in. There's a, there's a lot of them. I think Henson was here. I think he was here here. waiting for the yeah. book to open. I, I woke up this morning, <laughs> showered early, went to the cage, put, my, put it in old school. You did. Cash, gave my ticket. They wrote it down. I feel good about that. So what do we got here? Let's, let's talk it through. Let's talk about, okay, so this is free pick, not a lot by any means. Yeah. I got South Carolina, Texas Tech, and Texas. This is called my bounce back ticket. Right, These are teams right. that South Carolina and Texas Tech both lost by 20. Good bounce Ooh. back spots. Yep. And Texas, I, I feel like they're a little bit undervalued. I like what they do on the road at a neutral site. I think they're going to play well tonight. Max A. Smith has been in the Sweet 16. Yep. Rodney Terry has been in the Elite Eight. Yep. Yeah. I'm just saying. They're going to come out, I think defensively, come out with a little fight. I think defensively, how they've jumped on teams and upset teams and played well is defending, pushing them out. And I think they're going to do that kind of mistake this, this mm -hmm. time around. All right, Jeff, the best storyline of the day, first day of the NCAA tournament is? I mean, we, we got a coach who's fired. He's coaching. <laughs> yeah. He's fired. That's what I was going to say. Ken Munson yeah, yeah. is can. Yeah, he was yeah. shit can over a week ago. What did he say yesterday at the press conference? I, I don't have to answer anything that I don't want to. I'm working for free this week. I guess, he, you know, <laughs> Mark Few made a joke. Munson, for people that don't remember, he was Gonzaga's head coach before Gonzaga, really as it became Gonzaga, right? And then Mark Few took over. He was the coach in 99 when they made the run to the Elite Eight right. and lost to UConn um, to that Rip Hamilton team that won the title. And he's now coaching against Tommy Lloyd. Mm-hmm. Who was going to be the coach he, in waiting at Gonzaga? He hired, who, who he hired as a GA yeah, at Long Beach right. or at Gonzaga? I can't remember. I think, I'm pretty Gonzaga. sure it was Gonzaga. 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 Yeah. 
So unbelievable storyline. Arizona plays Long Beach State. It's a late game tonight. And uh, again, I don't know if Mons can, can win this game, but just one of those things that's incredible. And he said it's kind of allowed him to take a different perspective in everything right now. Now, he doesn't want to be done. He wants to, to coach beyond um, when, when he loses, which probably will be today. But let's face it, my alma mater, Arizona, has not had a lot of success in the NCAA tournament lately. Nope. No, they lost last year. That That is the wildest thing. So Arizona last year lost to a 15 seed, and it feels like nobody remembers it because it happened oh, like I remember. hours, hours after Purdue lost to a 16 seed. So everyone was just kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, they lost too, but it wasn't really even that big of a deal. Yeah. And with the portal, you can't even be like, well, last year they, like, some teams have two whole different teams. Totally different teams. Yes. Arizona. Yes. Uh, but the coaches are they the same. Caleb Love. Yeah. The coaches mm -hmm. are the same. Yeah. And some of these coaches, they have some mental blocks when it comes yeah. to winning in the tournament. That's just part of it. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Uh, so, Dan Monson, anything else? What else? Go ahead. Lot. Miles I, Rice. That was Miles Rice. Yeah, you we alluded talked about to Washington State. Yeah, it comes back from, what else? from cancer. I, I like the Long, the long Beach. That's, that's gold right there. Like Again, South Dakota State against Iowa State. The, the Eric Anderson, TJ Altsenberger deal. The... My favorite one is Bucky um, McMillan. Bucky McMillan, Bucky big Ball. high school coach. Bucky Ball, what was it, four years ago? Four he years ago, he was a high school coach. Four years ago, uh, Bill Self had the number one team in the country when COVID shut everything down. And now they're facing off in the first round. He has a chance to upset Will him. Wade being back? Will Wade being back. The Wizard. Oh. Willie the Kid and the Bandits. He's got to love it. The yeah. Wizard. Love it. Willie the Kid. So you think he's going to lose, though? I just think it's it's one of those things where everybody's so on Will Wade. Yeah. That, you know, you that, know what Will Wade promised me? I know what he promised. You know what he promised me? Yeah, I know. If McNeese State wins, yeah. he will do an interview with us live from the locker room. It's true. On the celebration. So I'm I'm rooting for McNeese State for the content, baby. You're right. We need this one for the content. I think Gonzaga is so interesting this year. This, I think a lot of the reasons why we see more upsets in all sports, all levels, is because now people are looking. You can't watch TV without seeing a line or You're underdog. Right. So, I, Gonzaga, they got eyes and ears. They're like, oh, everyone thinks we're going to lose. They're going to be a little more tuned in than, per se, normally would. Like, when me and you were playing, we didn't know what was going on with no, the lines and no spreads. Line, like, right? we, 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 we got the death threats after we lost, though. So. You did. Yeah. I got one little Facebook message when uh, we played in the tournament. I think I tried to go to – I knew we were going to loot win. But we were about four or five. And I tried to go to – I said, Thomas is three, just to be a jerk. And I got some crazy messages. So the, the cover must have been over under, whatever was in doubt. But that now, was about now it. Now you would get you would get Venmo messages. Oh, yeah. oh, oh really? Oh. That's what you get. Yeah, that's what these kids get now. They get Venmo messages. People it's requesting you money. Owe me, you owe me this much money. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, JB Bickerstaff yesterday said that a bunch of gamblers got his phone number last year and called him up and were basically saying, like, like what are you doing with these games? And it's wild. Death threats. Um, death threats, yeah. Um, there, I, there have been times where I've definitely cussed out people under my breath for the way that things have ended. Right. The ones that are the worst are uh, if you're if you're got an underdog and they're down by eight and the line is nine and a half and they foul with three seconds left down by eight. And you're I mean, like, no! is, is there anything worse than a pointless buzzer beater three to backdoor to oh. cover or not? I mean, is there mm -hmm. anything more? We'll find out today. Yes. I'm yeah. sure we'll see one of them. We gotta have some field. Of, we gotta have some bad beats. I'm gonna have some bad beats yeah. today. Yeah. For the show. Well, here that's my question. All right, before we do that, yeah. I just want to add one more uh, storyline we haven't talked about yet. Keith Danbra, uh, LeBron James, high school coach, yeah. Duquesne head coach. Uh, his wife has some health issues. Father had some health issues a couple of years ago. Hasn't been the easiest path for him. Makes it to the NCAA tournament. Has a chance to win a game. First time Duquesne's been there since I believe it's. Uh, 1977, the year that Jeff Goodman graduated high school. So, um, wow. it'd be great to see him have a chance Bullshit. to win a game. It'll be a lot of fun. Dancing queen. Why do I deal with this? Look, man. All right, here's here's the prediction I want now. Tio, I'm going to go to you first on this one. What is the <laughs> wildest game that we're going to see? Where's the buzzer beater coming from? Where's the memorable moment coming from? Where is the the one that always stands out to me as the most underrated NCAA tournament game of all time? Chris Mack, Frank Martin, the 2010 tournament, Kansas State, Xavier. Overtime, Jamal Crawford. Remember Jamal Crawford hit that step back like 35 foot. Or Gus Johnson was on the call. The beauty is we don't know. Like you asked that question, and it's like we have no. That's the beauty of make the a tournament. prediction. Give me a guess. I know, but what I'm saying is the beauty of the tournament is such that it could come anywhere. FDU beat Purdue a year ago. Like nobody thought that was possible. One person did. Tobin Anderson. He called it. 
I mean, it. great. Of he course called he called, called it. The locker room. Of course he called By it. By the way. And I'm sure Donnie Jones is calling that, that Stetson's going to beat UConn. Yeah, but Donnie Jones didn't, didn't turn to the CBS cameras and say, guys, I don't want Purdue to see this. I think we can beat this. Because that, that's not Donnie Jones's nature, but he's telling his team that. He's I saying just, it behind closed doors. It's just so funny to me. He looked at the cameras that are all access. And, I don't want Purdue to see this. Like, all of a sudden, they're just going to shut the cameras right, off right, right. and immediately turn back on me. Yeah, we can beat them. They're not very good. I think we got a chance. Yeah, like, everybody's going to see that, Toby. I, I, everybody's going to see that. Luke, that's, your, that's your call? Riley Minix. Riley Minix. Oh, gonna hit he, a big shot for Moorhead State. He's today. fun, man. Uh-huh. Wait and watch. I, I think the mix. I think because of the implications, the upset pick. I think Manny State thinks they can beat Gonzaga. Totally. <laughs> and I think Gonzaga is like, we're not letting this go. We've been kind of overlooked this year. I think the intensity of that game is going to be fun to watch because both teams yeah. are going to come in with different motivations, and that'll be fun to watch. The great, th- the great thing about the opening game for today is. Both Mississippi State and Michigan State might not score for the last six minutes. The game-winning bucket might be at the 6.30 mark in the second. <laughs> that is, listen, that is my bet of the day. Yeah. Well, under 130 and a half, I don't know what it is. Mississippi State, Michigan State. I hate sweating unders. Especially but the I, first game because I think at the noon, are a little nervous, right? Like I'm going to hammer the under. Hey, I got to get to the window. The, the other bet that almost always hits, you bet the first half unders for any tournament game played in the afternoon. First half under, tournament game played in the afternoon. Highlighter. Yeah, I like those. Get the first half unders in on there. And they hit like a 67% rate or something crazy like that. Okay. Um, here's my prediction for the, the craziest thing that we're going to see today, right? I think Sanford's going to run Kansas out of the gym. I think it'll be like a 15-point win. You're all spread? No, I think, I think Sanford's going to win by like double digits. I just digits. saw him last week. Like, I don't think they're talented enough to do that. I don't. Now, Bucky, the great thing Put about Put some Sanford. respect on a chore chore's name. George, George, man, right. I know, but Put I just don't think they're talented enough to out to Put run some respect out of the gym. on Bucky Ball's Listen, name. Listen, if they can just be in the game at the end. Now, again, the one thing is they have no answer. If Hunter Dickinson is at 90% even, mm-hmm. they have no answer for it. Zero. Now, again, if Hunter's hurt, if Hunter's hurt and David Chow, our doctor, is, is correct that Hunter's going to be closer to 50%, 60% out there, <laughs> Then, then yes, Sanford, Sanford could beat him and beat him by double digits. I just don't see it happen. Hey. KJ Adams, KJ Adams is, is going to go to work against Sanford. They uh, have no answer. I don't know, sure, Jermaine, sure. Jermaine, Marshall, Jermaine Marshall might fight. I'll live with K- they might listen, both hey, KJ. If, 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 if we got to die with KJ Adams having a good game, I'm go- I, I, I love that for Sanford. Yes. CO, <laughs> I'll just say this. If uh, Hunter Dickinson is at 50%, you know what it's going to be for him in the post? A chore to score. <laughs> All right, listen. Give me, give me a toast of the, a toast of the day before we go. I want your toast, toast prediction. To we got about sixty seconds left. Toast of the, like, uh, the day. Mimosa for 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 the morning. Mimosa for the morning. Toast of the day. Coffee with no creamer. I'm going. Uh, <laughs> hey, we're getting started. Mississippi State. Chris Jans, who's a tournament staple. Nobody knows about it yet. Mississippi State. They get a win to start it out. I mean, listen, I'm just happy to be here. I, I lo- honestly, this is, this is going to be so cool. Mm-hmm. Four days here. Four days, nonstop. Make sure you, you again, <laughs> we're on after the games. Uh, stick with us after dark because uh, this is going to be fun. Yep. My mimosa for the day, I'm going to go with my Tar Heels. We haven't brought them up one time. Are they playing here's today? To a, playing Wagner. Here's, Are they here's playing to a, today? Here's to That's a good, smart. Here's to That's a good smart. tournament. Run for my Tar Heels. Man. That's smart because we hadn't mentioned them, which was, which was about to be a guarantee that they would lose. And I don't have, job. I don't, and I don't have hey, them in the final four. I got Arizona on that one. I got them winning it all. I got Arizona on the beat. Yeah. Um, my mimosa of the morning um, is going to go to uh, BYU. BYU. Ali Khalifa, DJ Burns. Off. Listen, come back tonight, midnight tonight, stadium, Sirius XM, YouTube. We'll be here. Field of 68 after dark, Mandalay Bay.